Hello, I'm Chen Yuwen. We are five member group and teammates information is shown on the slide. I'm going to present the research proposal in the next 10 minutes. The topic we are going to do is an investigation of online learning satisfaction in higher education during the COVID-19 pandemic. First of all, let me briefly go through the background of the study. In the spring of 2020, education officials have been impacted by the rapid spread of coronavirus, creating uncertainty implications for higher education. All contact education had to be stopped abruptly. From primary schools to universities, the corona pandemic has forced the shift from face-to-face -to, -face to online education everywhere. The results illustrated that the COVID-19 pandemic has also caused a severe damage in education system, affecting about 1.6 billion learners in 191 countries all over the world. The suspension of schools and other places of learning affects 94% of the world's student population and is as high as 99% in low-income and low- and middle-income countries. Then let's move on to literature review. From the extended research, e-learning has been recognized as a useful method in addressing education needs. Student satisfaction is conceptualized as students' perception, which is developed from the perceived value of education at a particular education system. A previous research inferred that there's no significant differences between online and face-to-face -face learning. However, several studies have reported that students were more satisfied with face-to-face -face teaching. A report last year from best colleges found there are, no, there are differences in the challenges and experiences of men and women in online education, consistent with findings of previous, uh, while the difference between genders is not significant. The increasing attention of e-learning in developing countries implies that perceived quality of, of, of uh, education might vary according to developed and developing parts of the world. Developing country, for example, China, experiences an inequity development in different regions, both economically and technically, which might influence the quality of online education. Prior study deduced the variables that influence the student satisfaction. In this study, we'll investigate the eight variables, which are learning environment, resources, student contribution, instructor, tutorials, and content affecting the student satisfaction in online learning. Based on the external research, we developed the, we developed it high, three hypotheses. The first one is court structure. It will have statistically strong significant impact on student satisfaction. And the second is there will be no statistic significant difference between genders of students and satisfaction. And the last one is there will be a statistically significant difference between regions of students and satisfaction. In terms of the problem, most students and uh, most studies take a perspective from developed countries to investigate the effect of e-learning on student satisfaction. Food study focuses on developing countries, uh, which face uh, different pedagogical contexts and technological sophistication. And moreover, field studies have been conducted from the perspective of gender and regional differences in developing countries. So in this study, we'll fill these gaps by providing an insight into the effect of online courses on students' satisfaction with their learning experiences, taking into account of gender and regional differences. And we especially addresses the following questions. The first question is, does e-learning influence student satisfaction? And the second is, are there any gender differences in e-learning satisfaction? And last is, are there any regional differences in e-learning satisfaction? Uh, in terms of the significance of the study, uh, first of all, it adds to the body of literature that examines the relationship of e-learning and student satisfaction. 
It will also highlight important predictors influencing education service quality. The findings will assist university administrators in making pedagogical decisions with respect to how the course is to be delivered. And obviously, the study is closely linked to quality education, the fourth United Nations Sustainable Sustainable Development Goals. University uh, university administrators and policymakers who are aware of students' attitude towards online teaching and to what extent the conceptual factors hinder or improve their learning experience can foster the factors that positively influence the engagement of students and alleviate ones that negatively associated with learning experience. In this manner, students will be more driven to accumulate the technical and the vocational skills for employment, decent jobs, and entrepreneurship, which contributes to target 4.4, and more knowledge and skills needed to promote sustainable development, which contributes to target 4.7. Uh, interestingly, there are an increasing number of international students all over the world. International students with satisfied learning experience will gain increased mobility in their employment options. Those returning to their home countries would contribute to the fulfillment of target 4.C, increase the supply of qualified teachers. Then let's move on to the last part, research methodology. This study will use quantitative research with a questionnaire survey method. The research design will be divided into four steps. The first step is sample collection, sample selection, sorry. Uh, this is an analytical, analysis, uh, uh, analytical study and will be conducted in the year of 2021 to 2022 in selected universities, uh, which are Zhejiang Normal University, which, located, uh, which is located in eastern China, and the Rishi University, which, located, which is located in western China. The sample size will be 300 university students selected from systematic sampling. Uh, because they, uh, because Tinsley suggested a ratio of five to ten participants per item would be appropriate. Appropriate. And the adequacy of sample size will be using either uh, either method to determine. Then for the data collection. First, first, we'll send an email to all university students, encourage them to complete the questionnaire. The email also highlights that all the information gathered would be anonymous to ensure confidentiality. In order to ensure there's no data loss, the data collected from respondents will be immediately collected. But we only record the questionnaire that is completed at least uh, 85% uh, by respondents. For the questionnaire, which consists of two parts, the first part is demographic questions. Uh, we will ask participants to indicate their gender, age, and the, uh, uh, ethnicity, year in program, and the faculty to describe the sample. And for the second part, self-report questionnaire, students will answer to 40 items. Uh, and the items are measured using a five-point Likert scale from one very disappointed to five very satisfied. And last up is data analysis. Multiple regression methods will be used to replace missing values or data for any remaining items. The descriptive data of the research will review by the main standard deviation range for each of the constructs will display. Ordinarily, squares method will be used to reach the first research question. T-test will be applied to reach the second and third research question. Data will be, anal will be analyzed by IBM Sparse version 27 to conduct descriptive analysis. Amos software version 27 will be used for testing the hypothesis. That is the end of our presentation. Thank you for your time.